when it comes to row shooting, we usually leave it to Lord Lupton of Butteloshire. That's not to say that Crown Prince Crow can't shoot row, he just chooses not to, as there aren't many on his ground. There is a potential gold medal buck with his name on it, however, that ship may have sailed. Well, we were going to go and see if we could uh, get a row buck at my place tonight, but we've had people in with dogs on some of the spring drilling, and he seems to have disappeared. Hopefully they haven't got him. And he's just a bit of pressure from getting chased a couple of times where well, he's just staying in the wood. So I thought I'd give him a bit of a break. So I've come up here, sitting in a high seat tonight. It's a bit breezy, not ideal, but it's just nice to get out. It's quite a nice bright evening now, so get out. We'll just have a quick walk down through the wood, then come back round. There's a high seat down the back here. We're going to sit in there for an hour or so. So we find ourselves on the ground where Andy gets a few days pheasant shooting in return for helping out with the cover crops. There are supposed to be quite a few here and doing enough damage for the numbers to be pushed back a bit. It's quite surprised we didn't see one down here on this nice bit of grass down this valley. I was expecting to see one down here. You often get bumped around here during the pheasant drive, don't they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we do the pheasant drive, they're always running through here. It's a nice bit of wood here, they, they tend to like this bit of wood, so. There's a buck. You want it? Yep. It's crashed down through here. There's all blood going down the bank here. Give it a couple of minutes and hopefully it'll lay down and that'll be it. I usually head and neck shoot stuff, but that one I went for a good shot. Shoulder shot. That worked quite well, didn't we? Come around the corner. And we was watching her toe, and she was trotting up towards us. And as she was trotting up towards us, I mean, the buck just trotted across. He came across onto the track. And so, it's coming all the way through here, look. Right the way through. Blood pumping out all the way through here. Through here. Through here. Blood pumping out still. That's where he's got to. Lovely shot. They look so mangy this time of year as they're going from their, their winter coat through their summer. Right. Oh, there's a nice one to take out. Here's no good, but nice little one. Perfect job. When I first looked at him, he looked really big. Not head-wise, but actual animal-wise, he looked quite big. But now we've got him, he's he's not that that big, but a ah, pretty little thing, isn't he? Right. I think it's about two years, I think. Yeah, he might might be. Yeah, he's probably two year old. Uh, the, the one I got back at home, he's got. He's got a big spike, two spikes coming out the front, real big ones. Um, he's, he's a good six-pointer, really good six-pointer, and he's, the coronets there, they're a lot bigger, twice the size of that, and he's a lot longer. See there, they live with the top of his ears. The one I've got, he's probably up here, he's well above the ears. But, no, he's a nice one to take out. So, but they, like I say, they look, they look horrible this time of year when they're going from their winter coat into their summer coat. If you're going to do a, a shoulder mount, it's not the ideal time really. But you can always put head on to uh, another skin later on anyway, so it's not the end of the world. going to gollock this out now, quick. And then go up and sit in the high seat for, well, what we got, about three quarters of an hour? No, probably more than that, about an hour. I'd go and sit up the high seat for an hour and, so if we can 
do the keeper a favour and shoot the fox. Be nice, finish the evening off. I'm changing bullets now on the foxes. I'm just putting plastic tip in. See how we get on one of these. Just had a shot down there where it's disturbed any foxes that might come. I don't know, but I haven't disturbed anything over that way. So. Very Do I? I've got warm ears. Oh yeah. On the other side of the spade off field, Andy spots another buck. He's a nice animal, that one. He come all the way along that head of last one. Wind's just right as well. Don't know what from him to us. <laughs> See, he's got a bit of a lopsided head. Left hand side as you look at it, or right hand side as he is. It's a bit shorter. I'm standing there. <laughs> so they just browse on, on the brambles and on the blackthorn. Marking his territory. Marking it with his horns and digging the ground. Perfect shot. Be a good head next year. He ain't sure now, is he? Nice shot, that. He come, come out of the wood over there. He just worked his way along. Oh, nice to watch him, really. I've got one, I'm not greedy. I'm happy with that. Be there for someone else or be there for next year or another day. Now he's got the hunt now. That's where we stopped and, and shot that one. We dragged him back up through. That's him barking now. He'll probably come running up here in a minute. You know something ain't right. Yeah, he's come back out. He's come back up to the edge of the wood now. It creeps into view, possibly curious about the small shape of the carcass below the high seat. 20 minutes later, it walks into the thicker woodland behind and we head home. It's been a great evening stalk with meat for the table and a little more time spent understanding our quarry.